Well, good afternoon and welcome to the second Encore Live webisode. I'm your host, Robin Bell, and I'm really looking forward to our interviews here today. Now, for those of you just joining us for the first time, you might be wondering, what is Encore Live all about? Well, Encore Live brings industry leaders and Avery Denison experts together in an engaging live format to help you serve your customers with insights and services that will help you grow your business. We're going to begin our broadcast today with Susan Sutton, Editor-in-Chief of Adhesives and Sealants Industry Magazine also known as ASI Magazine. She's going to be talking about the current state of the supply chain. Now, that's something a lot of us are interested in hearing about. Based on the insights of key players in the industry, Susan will address how organizations are dealing with the impact of COVID-19, the winners and the losers of the pandemic, and she's going to preview one of her publication's upcoming features. With that, let me say welcome to Encore Live, Susan. We're happy that you're here with us today. Oh gosh, Robin, thanks for having me. Yeah, this should be a lot of fun. So Susan, to start, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your publication, ASI? Absolutely. So I've been with BNP Media, our parent company, for over 20 years. ASI publishes a monthly e-magazine. We also have a website that's updated daily. We produce two e-newsletters, as well as the Bonding with ASI podcast and the ASI Insider video series. We focus on technical features, case studies, uh, industry news, new products, new technologies, all of that fun stuff. And we also try to cover just some general trends to help our adhesive and sealant formulators, manufacturers, and end users kind of navigate what's going on in the world and try to understand how it might impact our industry. So you're pretty much covering it all. Well, we do what we can. You do what you can. That's right. You know, I'm wondering, um, you probably never had to report during a global pandemic in the past, right? Uh, no, no, this would be no, my first. No, this would be your first and hopefully your last. Yes. So gosh. looking back at 2020, as editor-in-chief of ASI, what was it like reporting during a global pandemic? And from the outset, what impact did COVID-19 have on the supply chain? Well, I'm, I mean, it was very hectic. <laughs> Obviously, like everyone else, we were trying to figure things out, you know, um, almost on a daily basis that things, it seemed like things were changing, changing. But at the beginning, I was trying to get a handle on how the pandemic might impact the adhesives and sealants industry, you know, like everyone else. And as part of our coverage, I reached out to Dan Murad, he's president of the ChemQuest group, to discover what their research found. And at the time, this is again at the very beginning of the pandemic, a lack of supply wasn't really the main problem for materials for adhesives and sealants. There were some shortages. Um, alcohols, for example, were being diverted, and rightfully so, for hand sanitizer production. Um, there were some issues with photo initiators and uh, perhaps some pigments and dyes that were being sourced out of China. But uh, the issues that we were running into typically at that time really had to do more with the geographic location of the source of materials, not that the materials weren't out there. Um, the, the issues with uh, tariffs in China were causing some pricing issues as well. But the main issue really for adhesives and sealants materials was uh, transportation with the shutdowns and all the travel restrictions, um, as well as the driver shortage. It was really just an issue of getting the raw materials from point A to point B. Yeah, uh, geography really did play a, a role in this. So now that we're heading into a post-pandemic world, what supply chain issues is the industry seeing now? And also, what steps have companies been taking to navigate the volatility? Well, sure. So we're just putting, putting the finishing touches right now on a piece for our July 2021 issue. It's an industry roundtable. I reached out to key players all along the supply chain. We got responses from raw material suppliers as well as manufacturers of adhesives and sealants. And the first question I asked was, how are supply chain issues impacting your business? And we got a lot of really um, very thoughtful, thorough responses to that question and all of the questions. As a matter of fact, I really appreciated the great participation we, we um, got for this piece. But 
the bottom line really is just that the supply chain is much more volatile now than it has been uh, certainly in the last year or so. There's several different factors at play that are causing the volatility. Um, one of the main problems was uh, winter storm URA back in February shut down a lot of Texas and parts of Louisiana and that shut down oil production for the most part, at least, you know, certainly a, a large portion of it. And that impacts adhesives and sealants because we really rely heavily on the petrochemical feedstocks for our production. So that reduced supply led to uh, an inability to obtain materials in a lot of cases, as well as certainly the related uh, price increases that come with limited supply. Now, at the same time, our adhesives and sealants manufacturers are looking to build up their inventories. Inventories were pretty low over the last year or so due to low demand. And so, you know, the industry was looking for more supply when there was not as much supply available. And, and that's never good for anyone, unfortunately. Costs, yeah. Are, yeah, costs are going up. Um, and transportation remains an issue. I think the driver shortage is probably worse now than it was this time last year. So yeah. you, to kind of, um, you know, navigate their way through all of this uh, mess, it feels like a lot of times the companies are taking lots of different steps. Some are pretty creative, some are pretty straightforward. Um, from the raw materials and chemicals supplier side, uh, a lot of companies are very simply just increasing production, whether they can add a shift, a third shift, or perhaps a weekend shift, or, you know, perhaps they're expanding their facilities, but they are definitely working to increase their output. Mm. Um, for adhesives and sealants manufacturers, they have, if they haven't before, they're certainly now looking beyond their kind of tried and true business partners to source their key materials from multiple suppliers. So they're looking to identify, you know, plan B, plan C, plan D opportunities for instances where their main supplier perhaps can't fulfill uh, their needs for a key material. One so, thing, go yeah. ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> One thing that um, both material suppliers and manufacturers of adhesives and sealants are looking to do more is digitalization. Mm -hmm. um, and that essentially means employing a digital platform to uh, offer a solution. So e-commerce would be a good example of a, a digitalization solution. It provides a flexible, more convenient, hopefully, experience for the purchaser while streamlining uh, various processes for the supplier. So in terms of supply chain, Digitalization offers, it addresses a number of concerns really. It can provide visibility kind of all along the supply chain. It can help track demand and sales levels. And it, it really, uh, different platforms can just make processes more efficient and flexible. So digital solutions can help with trends and forecasting. It can help with uh, streamlining inventory management. There's really lots of possibilities there. But digitalization can also provide provide benefits uh, beyond the supply chain, just in terms of general communication, for example. I don't know about you, but I haven't spent a lot of time in an in-person meeting in the last year or so. So um, Zoom and you know, similar platforms are really offering digital solutions for communication, whether it's internal or external, um, you know, troubleshooting, problem solving type meetings can be held virtually and it, that has really um, uh, developed, I think more than anyone really thought possible a year yeah. or, or so ago. But digitalization can also even help with uh, general operations. One company I heard from is using, or they're exploring at least, machine learning and artificial intelligence to help them yeah. with some of their manual business tasks. So I thought that was interesting, something to look for in the future. Yeah, AI is definitely taking a, a stronger lead now. And certainly resiliency in IT and, um, and certainly digitalization. Um, why don't we switch gears and take a look at the other end of the spectrum. In terms of end use markets, which ones have been the winners and which ones have been the losers throughout the pandemic? Well, when I spoke with Dan Murad of ChemQuest uh, back at uh, the beginning, late March, early April, they had identified a few uh, end use markets that they were terming, kind of projecting as winners, neutrals, and uh, losers for the pandemic. Um, one of the winners that certainly uh, definitely proved to be a very strong industry is uh, residential DIY construction. Um, you know, we were all stuck at home with the stay at home orders. We had projects that had piled up that we hadn't had a chance to get to. Uh, we might have needed to develop a home office or a school space for the kids since schools were closed. So mm -hmm. DIY uh, residential 
really uh, was quite strong throughout the pandemic. Uh, other projected winners were multifamily, multifamily residential construction, which did uh, go quite strong really until the last, oh, there's been a little bit of a slowdown in the last couple of months too, I think probably to the, the lumber shortage and labor shortage as well, but it's, it's been pretty strong. Uh, other winners were packaging, medical, safety, health, and wellness as well. Yeah. So the losers that they projected was transportation, which absolutely 100% correct. <laughs> Automotive has struggled for sure. Yeah. Um, and auto repair and finishing um, kind of rides along with that. But transportation starting to come back, thankfully. So that's a good sign. Yeah. Um, other projected losers were professional residential construction, uh, durable goods, oil and gas, and marine and leisure. But when I uh, was putting together the industry roundtable uh, for our July issue, I asked about what end use markets were offering our, our respondents opportunities. So the really strong winner that I'm hearing is packaging. Um, you know, once again, everyone was at home, stores were closed, we were ordering online, e-commerce went sky high. And so, uh, you know, packaging opportunities for adhesives and products like tapes and labels really uh, benefited from that aspect of it. Um, labels yeah. were also strong for medical and pharmaceutical, for example, and also for uh, temporary signage, social, social distancing signage, for example, was quite kind of a surprise winner. Yeah. Um, the medical market is doing pretty well. Wearables, for example, there are various new technologies um, that have been developed and are continuing to be developed to address various needs, certainly COVID patient needs um, with, you know, actual medical devices being affixed with adhesive patches directly to the patient. So that's ongoing. Mm -hmm. And consumable goods has turned out to be a, a winner uh, throughout the pandemic. One kind of surprise win for me, I hadn't thought about this at the beginning was um, residential toilet paper sales were much higher than commercial toilet paper sales, which makes sense because people were at home instead of at work. But Residential toilet paper requires uh, more adhesive than commercial toilet paper. So that was a, a surprise win. Yeah, and a surprise all the way around, I think. Um, let's, uh, finish, <laughs> let's finish this up. And uh, can you give us a, a quick preview of what's coming up in your next issue? Absolutely. So in addition to the industry roundtable piece I've been discussing, we will also have in the July issue our ASI Top 20 listing of the leading global manufacturers of adhesives and sealants and related products. So to put together that article, we reach out to leading companies in the industry and request um, their you know, sales details and other information that's specific to adhesives and sealants whenever possible. And we couple that information with uh, details from annual reports, investor presentations, you know, press releases, resources of that nature. So um, it's always our very most popular article of the year, and I'm really excited to kind of share that with the industry. And when does this issue come out? It was our July issue. So some of the content will start posting later this month, and it'll post on the website throughout the month. And the issue itself is scheduled to deploy, I believe, the second week of July. Okay, something to look forward to. This has been great, Susan, thanks for your time. I'm sure we're gonna get a lot of questions for you at the end of the broadcast. To read more from Susan and her colleagues at ASI, visit adhesivesmag.com.